This time last year, the world was real hyped about AI. Arguably, now at the start of 2025, there's more talk of AI than ever, but while the stock market boys haven't got the message just yet, it sure seems like this hype bubble is floating straight towards a pit. But before we draw any conclusions, let's take a look at the state of the market and the tools that are currently available. It's also worth making it clear that when we're talking about AI here, we aren't talking about true artificial intelligence so much as machine learning and neural networks. This is a novel form of computing for sure, but none of this is anything near intelligent. We aren't talking about AGI either, that's kind of the scary one. This is anything from marketing BS to a fancy form of database. Most AI tools and projects fit into a couple of categories. Things like generative AI, often shortened to gen AI, or analysis tools like optical character recognition. Within Gen AI in particular, you'll find text generation, called LLMs or large language models, image generation, think Stable Diffusion or DALI, and video generation like OpenAI Sora. Seeing as how ChatGPT stole a lot of the limelight last year, let's start with that. ChatGPT had quite an interesting year, as throughout 2024, they were teasing new models that were record-breaking, game-changing, and as close to AGI as you can get, and yet the reality? Well, sure, O1 is better than GPT-4.0, especially at what looks like reasoning. But to say that it's thinking or reasoning is to anthropomorphize an inanimate object. To be clear though, the improvements OpenAI have made to their GPT models, and more specifically their ChatGPT service, combining multiple neural networks into one seemingly cohesive user experience, is amazing. As an example, their new chat to ChatGPT feature is a combination of their Whisper model that converts audio to text, and then GPT-40 that turns what you said into a response, and then their TTS model to turn text into pretty natural sounding speech and audio. When you ask ChatGPT to create an image for you, it spins up DALI in the background. It's really cool, but it isn't as alive as OpenAI makes it out to be. That too goes to the O1 and O1 Mini models, with their speciality being deductive reasoning. In tests, you regularly find O1 in particular gives you considerably longer, more detailed, and, well, more reasoned answers. This is really cool. It's getting more questions you ask it right than wrong, which is a great start, although it's worth remembering that it still isn't actually reasoning. It tells you the thought process, which is great. I mean, more transparency into how neural networks work is really overdue, and it will sure help kids cheat on, uh, better on tests, but I suspect a little smoke and mirrors there. OpenAI's objective, their incentive-driven goal, is to convince you that their models, and to a degree models similar to from their competitors, are more advanced than they actually are, and more worthy of your $20 or $200 a month. One concern I have with improving the models is the training data. The way that you train a neural network is by giving it a whole lot of training data, labeled data, I should add, so that it can build associations. The more data, the more refined the model. Now, you can do plenty of optim optimizations to the actual code itself. Gradient descent is a tricky problem, especially when trying to balance cost and training time, but at the core of it, you need more data. OpenAI and their peers have already scraped the entire internet, trained it on every book ever written, with or without permission, and anything else they can get their hands on. So, what now? How do you improve the model with more data when you've got the entire collective works of the human race and that isn't enough? You can get your models to train themselves, but that very quickly runs you into issues with reinforcing undesirable outcomes. One area in particular that O1 is meant to be better at is programming. 
There's lots of talk about how AI tools are going to replace programmers' jobs real soon, but that would assume that the models can genuinely do deductive reasoning. Well, actually more than that. They can already spot problems in code without ever running it, giving it test data, or even actually knowing what the code does. For basic CRUD tasks, an AI tool is arguably a fantastic productivity booster. Set up a React 19 project with a contact form, React Select, and API calls to a Node.js backend will give you what an intern will take a month to do. Write a unit test for this code, done. But give it an abstract problem, the, the sort of thing that you'd be afraid to post on Stack Overflow because you'll get hate mailed out of existence, and it will struggle. Now again, O1 is better than the rest for this, but it isn't revolutionary. Programmers don't need to fear for the jobs, mostly because first the client would need to understand their own requirements, and we all know that that just isn't possible, but also because LLMs can't think. They can't solve unique and novel problems, especially without an ability to understand the problem. They can't actually run the code and breakpoint your way through to see where the, uh, the data is getting changed or where the issue is, nor can they understand the nuance of something like a bug in the framework itself or the language that they're using. Without the capacity to genuinely think, experiment, and yeah, reason, us coders will still have jobs yet. This whole not aware of what it's doing problem persists in all generative AI tools, and image generation is no different. That is exactly why earlier models just could not draw hands, because they're not drawing. There's no intrinsic understanding of what the words you type in mean. It doesn't know what a person looks like, just how to arrange pixels to get a reward. Obviously, with training, it can get better, and has, but much like LLMs, there's a limit to the training data, as well as a limit to how neural networks function to get better results. Naturally, that translates to video generation too, like OpenAI Sora, but even more so. One thing that Sora generally can't get right is physics. Because it isn't a simulation, it's an approximation. Of course, much like hands in pictures, AI video creation tools will get better and more convincing, but even more so there's a limit to the training data available. And then there's the class of AI tools that I think are genuinely game-changing, namely the analysis tools. Optical character recognition and the wider computer vision market has improved a lot with the introduction of neural networks. Even basic neural networks can generally figure out characters, numbers, and basic shapes, and in part thanks to generative AI models needing a classification system that isn't just new age slave labor, there are computer vision models that can detect considerably more advanced objects, people, and well, kind of everything under the sun. My absolute favorite use of AI is in healthcare. And not just a new age version of WebMD that tells everyone they have cancer for a paper cut on their finger or a runny nose, but for actually finding cancer early. There are a number of tools that have hit the news in the last year for being able to detect cancer in scans well before human eyes can, and with a shockingly high success rate. The magic of neural networks is that they're just looking for patterns, and while humans are pretty good at that, if you sick an AI on a singular problem with enough data, it's going to find patterns we would never have even considered an option. The downside is that they are generally black boxes without much explanation potential. So while these often proprietary tools can do the job, in fact one called Sybil can detect lung cancer with 80-95% to effectiveness even before doctors could find anything, if the endless grind of capitalism takes hold, and it will, because it's a proprietary, unexplainable neural network, there's no way to share that life-saving information. Still, these two can, will, and are saving people's lives, and that's absolutely amazing. So, that's the market. 
Now the hype. The most prevalent concern by far was fear of job loss, and I'll be honest and say that this is one hell of a complicated topic. It isn't the AI tools themselves that will lay people off, it's the business owners and decision makers that are being sold a product that can supposedly save them money, improve efficiency and make their lives easier. Regardless of whether or not the tools can actually do that, the fact that so many decision makers, apparently 67%, at least of those surveyed, are considering using some form of AI in their business means that the willingness is already there, regardless of the effectiveness. Job losses will come, at least partially, because the tools, even in their current state, can likely at least speed up work in some areas, and that'll be enough to convince the brass. Do I think that all jobs are, you know, in line for the firing squad? No, of course not. But the low-hanging fruits, like copywriters, stock video and photo creators, and assistants, might be worried. Jobs that require complicated processes, or antiquated systems, I'm looking at you banking and airlines, or troubleshooting and deductive reasoning, i.e. programming, I'd imagine you'd be safe. The thing that frustrates me is that all of this hype is driven by idiots in boardrooms who say dumb crap like, we need to integrate AI into our workflow so we'll be left behind and out of touch, while having zero understanding of literally anything other than the fancy coffee they boastfully drink all day and their bank balance. They don't understand their own team's work, workflows, problems and inefficiencies, and they sure shit don't understand what an AI is beyond the hype. People are going to lose their jobs because of their hubris. And that genuinely gets on my nerves. But that's capitalism for you. One other thing to consider, reports suggest that AI are, is currently consuming around 2% of the world's energy usage. Is crap like Copilot Plus that nobody seems to really want except Microsoft really worth all that energy? Literally. Personally, I'd get out while the game is good. Like it or not, AI is here to stay, at least for a while. With it being the talk of the town, with the town being boardrooms, and enough vultures circling the start skies, those being VC funded startups with various AI products that may or may not work, there's enough momentum here to keep this relevant for a while. And companies doing trial runs for AI tools will take a while to prove out too. But just looking at Nvidia's stock price alone, Man, that sure looks like a bubble to me. Although, what do I know? I'm just an idiot on the internet. And you should never take financial advice from idiots on the internet. Anyway, that's the state of AI, at least as I see it. I think the hype is still here, but it's quieting down for sure. And let's face it, the joke is getting overdone, with literally everything from your CPU to your toaster being AI now. It's getting dry and I know I'm getting bored of it, although I do have ADHD. With that said, those are all of my thoughts. I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about AI as a sort of well, hype machine? What do you think about it as actual products and services and tools? ChatGPT and Sora and you know the, the cancer detection AIs. I think those are really cool. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos, something like this one, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. If you want to check out more videos, again, not quite like this one, more regular tech reviews, check out those videos on the end cards. And if you want to support the channel, you can check out the links in the description, including to my own hardware, the open source response time and latency testing tools at osrtt.com. Otherwise, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you on the next video.